Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here and for attending my talk. I'm Alessandro Polidori, and I'm a senior software engineer at an Italian open source company called Netesis. I'm going to jump right in and get started. The focus of this talk is to explain how to make your Siphon WebRTC directly integrated into your web browser to make audio and video call without the use of any external plugin. But uh, first of all, I would like to explain why this talk. Okay, Netesis uh, has been an Italian open source company since 2003. And uh, we at Netesis have developed a phone switchboard system called NetVoice and uh, that is based on uh, Asterisk and FreePBX projects. And in 2010, we started the develop of uh, NetCTI that is a computer telephone integration which brings to the end user all the switchboard functionalities through a web application that interacts with Asterisk. In 2011, a new disruptive technology have appeared in uh, real-time communication field and uh, it uh, opened huge scenarios that gave developers the opportunity to make uh, new innovative communication methodologies. It was WebRTC. And uh, we immediately embraced this uh, new bleeding edge technology to realize a Siphon WebRTC uh, directly integrated into the NetCTI application that interacts with Asterisk. And uh, in this manner we offer to our customers the possibility to make audio and video calls from their browser without the use of any external plugin and without any additional cost. And without, of course, the use of uh, physical phones. So after some years of different implementations and usage in production on some thousands of customers, uh, I'm here to explain how Netesis have innovated their real-time communication field uh, making new innovative products with advanced features, such as the audio and video call from the browser. Okay, let's start speaking about WebRTC technology. What is it? WebRTC is a set of technologies that enable users to have a real-time communication between browser in a peer-to-peer -peer manner. At the beginning, only a few vendors supported it, but uh, nowadays all the major browsers have a native support, okay? And this is the good part, because you don't have any additional plugin and uh, you don't have any additional cost. WebRTC was born uh, in 2011, promoted by Google, and it's made up of uh, three fundamental APIs. The first is Get User Media, that you can use to access your media devices, such as your microphone, video camera, and so on. The second is RTC, peer connection, that does the negotiation, data encoding, decoding, and other operations. And the third is RTC data channel, that realizes the real-time communication, exchanging data and messages between the browsers. The interest expressed by the company in this technology is growing very fast because it opens huge scenarios to, to realize new communication, uh, new methodologies of communication. So I suggest to take it seriously into account. WebRTC uses different kind of protocols and of course they are real time. They can be divided into main groups, some for the transport and others for the signaling and in particular for the signaling, you can use uh, whatever protocol you want to send the, the information, the signals, but the most used one is the SIP protocol. Uh, a very important aspect of the, our communication is the security, and uh, for this purpose, we can achieve it using the secure version of the protocols. Other uh, protocols are SDP, that is used to describe the session that have to be instantiated between the browsers, and other protocols overcome the network problems related to the NAT. And these are Stone, Turn, and Ice. Stone, uh, for example, is used to, to get uh, your external public IP address, external from your local network. And the Turn is a, a server that uh, relay all the media traffic in uh, some scenarios. Now, after the short introduction, uh, we will see the overall architecture of the system of this talk. The main part we are interested uh, of this talk is the web user 
the web user interface with the web application that has the SIP from WebRTC to make audio and video call. And it interacts with the NetVoice PBX that is based on Asterisk. Also a community version exists that is called uh, NetServer VoIP PBX. Uh, we will see it uh, uh, in this talk. And um, it communicates with it and it's completely open source and available on GitHub. And um, a very important aspect of this talk is to give you a method to, to start playing with WebRTC in a complete manner. So in the next steps, we will see also how to easily run your own private PBX just in few, in few steps. Okay. The NetVoice PBX is externally connected to some VoIP provider through the internet and also it is connected also with a traditional PSTN network to communicate with all kinds of endpoints. Also, for example, the 5G devices. Okay, CPML5. The, during the years, uh, I've, uh, as I already said, we have developed uh, the phone switchboard system and the NetCTI web application that contains the CPM WebRTC. And during the years, we have implemented it uh, in two different manners. And uh, the first implementation was made using CPML5. What is it? CPML5 is a JavaScript library that uh, was born uh, at about uh, 2012 by the hands of Dubango Telecom, a French company. And it has been the first implementation of, H of an HTML5 SIP client. It was uh, a bleeding edge technology. And uh, so, as the word suggests, it, it implied a great advancement. But at the same time, also an increased risk because of unreliability of the software caused, obviously, by the continuous development process, okay? We used it uh, right away, something has gone right and something not, but um, generally speaking, everything was cool. Now it's very stable and uh, we have a good time with it. It was presented at Google I.O. in 2012, um, and uh, its main feature is that uh, it is 100% poor JavaScript, no plugin, you don't have any additional plugin. The media stack is based on WebRTC that uh, communicate uh, um, that um, the, SIP, the SIP protocol is the protocol used for the signaling and the transport used is WebSocket. And with it, you can uh, make audio video calls, but uh, uh, also instant messaging, screen sharing, and so on. And it supports both desktop and mobile platform. Okay. This is the overall architecture scheme used uh, with uh, CPML5. And uh, we are interested in the HTML5 part, okay, that contains uh, the web application with the WebRTC phone. It realizes both uh, SIP and SDP stack. This is the CPML5 JavaScript library. The SDP is used to describe the media session that has to be instantiated between browsers and, for example, uh, which audio codec will be used. Okay. And the SIP stack re uh, regards the SIP protocol. Okay. In, more, in more details, uh, some signals are needed to uh, negotiate and establish an agreement between the involved parties of the communication. And to send these signals, you can use uh, whatever protocol you want. But in this case, SIP protocol has been used and uh, over WebSocket transport. But uh, it supports also different, different protocols. Once the session has been established, WebRTC is used to send and receive all the media traffic and the client interact with NetVoice PBX that is externally connected to the PSTN and company network using different kind of protocols. Codecs are, uh, is a, another very important part in the communication, obviously. A codec, generally speaking, uh, reduce and code and decode the data to save bandwidth, to provide certain level of quality, and uh, to reduce the latency. Okay, now we will see how to implement a SIP on WebRTC using SIPML5. 
Okay, only a few steps are needed. First of all, you have to initialize the engine, okay? And uh, in this case, the global JavaScript object we always refer to is cpml. And so calling the init method, we have initialized the engine, okay? The second step is to start the zip stack. And then we can register the extension calling uh, the new session API. And as the final step, we can make a new audio and video call nothing else, okay, calling again the new session API. And uh, that's it. It requires uh, about 10 minutes for the whole process. Let's see it in more detail, okay. This is the, obviously the inclusion of the JavaScript library into the HTML code. One single file is needed. Then the engine initialization, so as I already said, we call the init method on the cpml object, passing to it two callbacks as parameters. One to manage the failure and one for the success. And in case of the success, we are going to create the zip stack in this manner, okay? The needed data are the server address of the server PBX that uh, can be on-premise on local network or also into the cloud, nothing changed. Then we specify the SIP extension URI that is composed by the protocol, the extension identifier, and the server address. The password of the extension, choose it carefully because uh, it, uh, it, uh, you, if it is needed to open the SIP ports externally to the internet, it's not rare to stumbling into script that uh, try to register the extension with some simple password and make call to some payment numbers. It's very, very common, so choose it carefully. The name, uh, the display name is the name to be, to be shown on the display of the phone when an incoming call arrives. Then we specify also the WebSocket uh, URL and uh, take a moment to observe that a customized port is specified, that is 889, okay? So, also this port has to be reachable by the client. And this is a, a WebSocket port of the asterisk. And in this URL has been specified also the protocol, that is a WebSocket secure. So, all the traffic is encrypted. Then we specify also some event listeners to manage all, all the runtime events. And then we start the zip stack. Okay, <laughs> these are all the data that uh, we are needed to uh, specify. WebSocket URL, event listener, and call the start function. Okay, then at, the, at this point we have to register the phone extension calling the new session API on the already created zip stack in the previous step. And uh, we pass to it the word register and also other event listener to manage all the operation, all the runtime operations. And uh, we call the relative function. At this point, if we have configured correctly all uh, the, the, the server PBX, we have the phone registered correctly and we make new audio and video calls in this manner calling again the new session API in the already created zip stack and passing to it some parameters to have uh, all the audio and video streams local and remote, okay? The parameters to be passed are a simple references to some HTML elements. So it's very simple and all using web standards. We pass other event listener, and at this point, we can specify the destination of the call. Okay, now let's uh, look a little deeper at the backend, okay? This is a fundamental part, of course. For this talk, I've used the NetServer VoIP PBX that is based on Asterisk and FreePBX project. It's completely open source, and you can find it on GitHub. Is based uh, obviously also on uh, NetServer Linux distribution. 
Nest Server also has a huge community of enthusiastic people. You can find it on uh, community.nestserver.org where you can get uh, help uh, for any problem that can arise. And uh, of course, you can participate also in the project in whatever manner you want. Okay, the enterprise version is called NetVoice and on top of it, we have uh, developed also the NetCTI application with the WebRTC phone integrated into it. Okay, as I already said, after this talk, you will be able to run your own private PBX at your home to start playing with WebRTC in a complete manner, okay? So for uh, this purpose, I've already created a VirtualBox uh, machine that you can easily run using Vagrant. So you, at your home, you only have to clone the GitHub repository and run Vagrant app. And you have the VirtualBox virtual machine running with a complete server PBX already uh, ready to use. All of this information, you, uh, you can find all of this, uh, of this data on uh, GitHub after this talk. Okay. So, uh, as I already said, at the end of the operation, you have your PBX ready to use. You can access also the free PBX web interface and uh, you can start experiment with uh, WebRTC technology. We will see it in the next slide. Okay. This is uh, another implementation of the SIP from WebRTC because uh, during the years we have decided to switch the implementation using a different product that is called Janus Gateway. What is it? Janus is a general purpose gateway made by Mythico Company and it's a WebRTC gateway. The difference with uh, CPML5 is that previously the client interacts directly with Asterisk WebRTC. But now it's a little bit different because we have the browser that uh, communicates with Janus Gateway that is a backend component which in turn operates with Asterisk directly using the SIP protocol, okay? So all the traffic is proxy passed by a web server. Its features is that uh, uh, the media communication is uh, WebRTC based. This, the uh, format of the messages exchanged is uh, the standard JSON. Its architecture is made by plugin. We have used only the SIP plugin, but uh, other kind of plugin exists. And uh, you can also uh, install uh, the core component even in poor performance devices. That was one of our requirements. And um, it provides also advanced features for monitoring that is very, very important in all production environments. And uh, also it realizes different interfaces for uh, different kind of communications. This is the architecture used with Janus, and uh, it's a little bit different from that uh, of uh, CPML5 because uh, now the client requires um, only the Janus JavaScript library. It communicates directly with Janus gateway component on the server, which in turn has the responsibility to operate with asterisk using the SIP protocol, okay? And all the traffic is proxy passed by the Apache web server, okay? So all the traffic is, uh, uses the HTTPS protocol, okay? Then uh, the PBX is externally connected to the PSTN and company network. Okay, how do you implement a SIPHONE using Janus library? Uh, only four steps are needed. The engine initialization. Now the global JavaScript object is called Janus and calling the init method, we have initialized the engine. We create a session. We attach a C plugin, and uh, at the final step, we can make new audio and video call, creating an offer. Let's see it in more detail. The inclusion of the library. It requires only two libraries. One is Janus JavaScript library, and another one is the WebRTC adapter that uh, uh, resolves all the changes that can arise in uh, the web standard or WebRTC and in the browser updates. 
The initialization of the engine is very simple because uh, Janus provides a very comfortable syntax. You can choose the debug level and uh, specify a callback that will do other operations. Then we create a session specifying the server URL and uh, take a moment to observe that it is a little bit different from that of CPML5 because now no customized port is present. All the traffic is HTTPS and is proxy passed by the web, web server. And uh, this is very useful because you don't have to open another port on the server. And in case of self sign certificate, you, can, uh, you have to accept it uh, on the browser only the first time. And then we specify other callback. We attach the C plugin. OK, specifying uh, many callbacks for different operations. And uh, in this slide, we, I, I cut off the code to concentrate only on the parameters to be passed and uh, to not complicate the reading of the code. And then we can make OD video call, creating the API create offer on the already created SIP stack. And in case of success, we specify the destination of the call. This slide is to, to show how to answer a call. So an event of incoming call arrives, and we specify some values in the body object, and then send it. That's it. OK. Now I will show you a little open source demo that is uh, open source and available on GitHub to better understand what we have seen until now. So to recap. The first operation is to run your own private PBX, and you have only to clone the GitHub repository and uh, run Vagrant app. At this point, you have your server PBX, and uh, we, are, uh, we open the showed URL with the demo of HTML5 zip from WebRTC. I, I will go to insert the, def the the default values that uh, uh, you can find on GitHub because uh, uh, everything is, uh, is on GitHub and you can access to it. And also how to run your private PBX. And then we, I will, I'm going to register the extension and making a new audience video call. For simplicity, I've already have a, um, a virtual box machine running, okay, to save time and uh, it's uh, on my local machine. So I will register an extension 200, another extension 201, and making an OD video call between them. OK. This is the already running virtual machine. Okay, it's a little bit. Okay. Here I've inserted the server address, that is a local IP address of the virtual machine. I specified the display name of the extension. The the extension identifier and the password. Okay. Only one moment. I I'm searching the window. And this is uh, another instance of the same demo. This could be different machines, one local and one remote. I've inserted the same data, the server address, the display name, extension that now is 201, and this is 200. OK, and I'm going to register the extension through a login button. OK. 
is a little bit uh, successfully registered as 200. I register also the extension 201. OK. And now I can make a video call, a, an audio video call, between the extension 200 to 201. OK. This demo is uh, available on GitHub to try it yourself. OK, there is no audio. But uh, here is an incoming call, and we can answer to it. OK. This part is the uh, local, local video on my machine, and this could be a remote, a remote, a remote one. But of course, for simplicity, this is a local machine, so we see me <laughs> on both parties. OK. We end up the call and come back to the presentation for a few sun slides. OK. What were the reasons to migrate from uh, one implementation to another? And uh, why the first implementation of CPML5? Of course, because uh, it uh, has a huge community of support on Google Groups. It, may, it, it has uh, many features. It's open source. And uh, obviously, it was the only implementation available when we started the development of the application. And uh, so um, in time, it was a bleeding edge technology. Uh, uh, your code could be break uh, suddenly, and you had to fix it and deploy it to everyone immediately. And this, uh, this kind of operation uh, become uh, very expensive in terms of money and time. And so we have decided to switch Janus Gateway, OK? That uh, it's independent from the, the browser. And uh, it's, uh, it's made by a mythical company that has a technical support by level. Uh, they, can, uh, they, they answer just in short time. And if you have any problem, they can help you. Okay? It's independent from the uh, change that can arise from the development of the standard. So we, we don't worry anymore about the changes of the technology and the browser updates. And uh, it offers also uh, advanced tools for monitoring that is very, very important in uh, all production environments. OK, this slide is only to demonstrate that you can use WebRTC technology to make new innovative unified communication systems. This is uh, the NetCTI application made by, Net made by Netesis that abstracts many different devices in, uh, to one single user and add also, many other services, uh, such as uh, the view of customer cards, the streaming video, phone book search, using a customized layer of REST API that is independent from the specific server PBX and the specific version of the PBX that you can use. And um, so uh, nowadays, uh, WebRTC technologies are growing very fast. And uh, the interest expressed uh, in the technology is uh, very interesting because it opens, th there are many opportunities for new kind of communication. And now you are able to make your own SIP from WebRTC using SIPML5 or Janus and a server VoIP PBX, only writing some line of code. OK, these are only some references to get out more information. And uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Yeah? Yeah, but uh, after this talk, uh, the slide will be available uh, on the internet, OK? I tweet it. <laughs> no problem. OK, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Alessandro, thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, two at the front. Wait a sec. Let me get there with the mic. Oh, sorry. Um, very nice job, by the way. Thank you. Um, if we have a custom build of asterisk, and uh, it's the, your net void, net voice. Net voice. How does that? Is that a custom um, version of asterisk itself, or is it just a pure distribution pulled down of the source? Pure distribution. Okay, and so. Then, Okay. And then we have developed a, 
Um, we have integrated also FreePBX web interface and we've developed uh, some uh, customized services such as a first configuration wizard, okay, to simplify the first configuration and to make all the basic uh, operation. For example, the creation of the user, the extensions, okay. uh, to associate a WebRTC phone to a user and uh, to, to assign different permissions to different users for all kinds of operation. To, to record the call okay. um, and to view the operator panel with the real-time events uh, so, that come from So the that. Myth voice modifications are the free PBX, basically. So, uh, excuse uh, me? There, is that a module of free PBX that you've added, or is it to the actual source of free PBX? Or? No, I, I try to, to remain with uh, all the development of the free PBX without adding uh, anything. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Very cool. And then the client is the CTI. Yeah, the client is called NetCTI. That is yeah, a computer CTI. telephone integration. It is composed by two parts, a client and the backend. Backend is wrote, has been wrote in Node.js, communicates with client with uh, REST API, WebSocket, and uh, WebRTC. And that can be modified, distributed, yeah. Yeah. anything you want with it. Yeah, of course, because the backend is a, a, a modular application. So, for example, there is a module that uh, does the proxy with uh, asterisk, and another component that communicates via REST API, another component that can communicate via, via TCP or Bluetooth. And uh, you can mix it, you can um, add uh, some other extension, and uh, so on. It's very modular. You can monitor the particular part and uh, if a new version of Asterisk has been released and a particular data of a particular event has been changed, you can go on the specific point and uh, you can change only it because uh, it offers an, uh, a layer of abstraction that uh, offers to the client an independent layer from the specific Asterisk. Uh, that is the um, difference from using ARI, okay? Because with ARI, you have uh, the client has the um, visibility of the specific channel of asterisk. In this case, we offer an abstraction of a conversation with an, identif with an identifier. So tomorrow, you can use also different kind of server PBX. Okay. Also, you, when you are binding the callback events, yep. um, is there a list of events like? Yeah. yeah there is. It's all online. Yeah, okay. and uh, all is available, of course, online on the specific size of uh, Janus Gateway, CPML5, and so on. Thank you. Yeah, again, as Dean said, thank you. Uh, amazing presentation. Thank you to you. Uh, my question is more specific to what it is we do, and your demo what where you is? had... Uh, we are a SaaS company. We do CRM software yep. primarily in the insurance space. Um, we're recently, as of last year, breaking into the telephony and, and asterisk, and this is our second year here, and obviously we love it. But um, the question is related to that industry, and I know that there's a lot of times when the agent needs to speak with, do a screen share to, or something with the client on the other end. And from looking at your application, my curiosity is, is there the potential to send out essentially a link uh, with a single API key usage or a GUID um, so we create a faux extension just on the fly with a GUID and then I can email a hyperlink to a specific email address so the client on the other end can just click the link and now we're doing a screen share or I'm talking to you face to face is kind of the, yep. the real world application that I see f from where we're sitting with what you've just presented. Yep. Not now, but uh, it's uh, simple to realize it because uh, uh, ul ultimately an, another uh, web standard API has been released to, to, that, to, to do the screen sharing. And uh, it could be done uh, v very easily, but uh, not now. <laughs> The, we have uh, some, uh, some API to create a bunch of extensions and so on, but no a link to share.
to, to make this kind of thing. But uh, it, it can be done easily. But the parameters could easily be passed within the URL, and you're already web-based. So, I mean, not, no, not the link isn't being generated automatically, but that's just a minor bit of code that can be written for a button click. Um, but the functionality is there on the back end. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. We've got another couple of minutes if there's any more questions. I'm on the back here. Um, did you do something special to get it working on Safari? Because I've been doing some tests and it always crashed. <laughs> no, we, we develop principally on Chrome, tested on Firefox, but uh, how our... Um, our customer is uh, principally based on uh, Chrome, but uh, ultimately Safari has the WebRTC support. So I think it works without any problems. But then you were talking about the Mac, not the iPhone, right? Sorry? But then you were talking about the Mac, not iPhone. But if yeah. you open a Safari in your iPhone, it's not the same thing, okay. is it? Okay, I'm, I don't know very well because I don't have tested. Anyone else? No? In which case, let's give it up for Alessandro. Thank you very much, Alessandro. Thank you to you.